First, when it comes to skills development, we need to operationalize the Philippine Qualifications Framework so that we reinforce learning of 21st century skills in senior high school and encourage mobility or transition to higher levels of education. Second, in my experience in TDAD before, on top of the actual training costs, wraparound costs like transportation, childcare, insurance, mentoring, are also strong determinants of persistence in TVET, meaning they stay longer in the program and they actually complete. So scholarship programs need to account for those and not just for tuition fees. Thirdly, we need to beef up capacity. Existing mechanisms like the Unified Access to Quality Tertiary Education could be used to upskill existing TESDA trainers and make TVET more attractive. Working with the private sector from program development, assessment, and certification is also another way of beefing up our capacity of the PIVET system. Fourth, interventions could be more targeted if we had a registry of youth need and potential PIVET clientele. In TESDA's estimates, there are about 35 million people who could benefit from PIVET. I suspect there's actually more, especially given our findings in terms of enrollment or access to tertiary education, but we need to know who they are, where they are, to ensure that our interventions can be more strategic given our limited resources. And lastly, we need to increase overall funding. Perhaps it's time to maximize TVET devolution and to explore private sector incentives like that of Malaysia's Human Resources Development Fund. The private sector advisory council that reports to the president has recently incorporated the P-Corp, which could be our answer to increase public-private partnerships in funding a resilient and sustainable skills strategy.